Welcome back to another episode of It's All Been Tracked Before. Not just any episode. We're into season three now, folks. It's Fox Brain. Strap on. As you know, you've watched the episode. You know we're here with you. We're here for you. Speaking of which, also here for you, here with you on IABDpresents.com, the IBD Presents Network. The good, the bad, and the geeky, or GBG as the hip cats call it. It's a pop culture podcast that's been around for a whole decade. Sometimes the, the movie and TV review discussion. Sometimes Nick Argbright just gives his thoughts in a short drive-by. Literally, not by your house, but he's driving by something. Sometimes they do live bits. Sometimes they do shows. So they, they warm up for this all been done radio hour every month at, at Mad Lab. So you can catch them there. Check out GBG and all of our other stuff at IABDpresents.com. And don't forget, you know I was going to mention it. Support us. Patreon.com slash IABD. Go there. Support us. Contribute. You get great benefits. You get all kinds of great audio copy. You miss a, you miss a live show. You miss a podcast. You want to get caught up? Contribute to a certain level. You have unlimited access. I shouldn't say unlimited, but very, very widespread access to the IBD Presents vault. Uh, something else to check out. We're talking TV here. We're talking Star Trek. Jerome C. Reviews. Also for nearly 10 years, and through more than 2,500 reviews, Jerome Wetzel has reviewed scripted television, covered dramas, comedies, broadcast, cable, even streaming networks here in 2018. Often reviewing the shows for the air. He's, he's the chief television critic for C42F.com and a contributor to Block Critics Magazine. So, so check that out, because... There's more TV than ever, 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 ever. You gotta pick and choose. You, you just can't blindly flip around. I mean, come on. You have limited time. However, it's not so limited that you didn't watch Fox Radio. You're gonna listen to us talk about it right here on It's All Been Trekked Before. Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Trekked Before. We're back for season three. Hey. It's been a long, long break. It has. <laughs> At least 45 minutes since we recorded the season two recap. I mean, six weeks, but it feels like 45 minutes. Spock's brain. I want to start with the episode rankings and go out on a limb here and say this is the best episode of season three. It is so, so far. far. <laughs> so far, definitely so far. need that qualifier in there. Oh well, absolutely. But uh, do you guys agree? Number one so yep. far. Yes. Perhaps yeah. one of the best of the series. Jump right in there. Yep. Okay. Whoa, okay. What did you just say? <laughs> You know, well, one, of, one of the best, like, 78 episodes of the series. One of the best. <laughs> <laughs> made the top 78, okay. Yeah. Good qualifier. You know, I qualifier. would say it made the top 76. <laughs> <laughs> because I definitely think it was better than Tomorrow Is Yesterday. You know, I might be inclined to agree with you. Cause, and I'm going to get into some of the other people's opinions on this episode. But I, I think not only Tomorrow Is Yesterday, but... I feel like there are definitely some episodes coming up that I hate a lot more than I hated this. And, yet, and I, not, I can't even—I shouldn't even say hate, but yeah. not liking. But there are episodes coming up later. I think that I hate. <laughs> but it's interesting because this is the episode that's always held up as the it is. epitome of what's wrong. It is with season three. Hmm. Like this is held up as the worst episode of Star Trek. It's not a bad example, but there are some worse ones coming. I think. Not just coming. We've already seen at least one worse one, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really have to debate if... I think Cat's Paw is better than this. Yes, um, I think so. I think the alternative factor is better than this, too. I do, so, too. So, I'd break the second worst so far. It did <laughs> not... It was not worse than Tomorrow's Yesterday for me. That's how much I loathe Tomorrow's Yesterday. <laughs> I'm very curious to see if Tomorrow's Yesterday holds the title at the end of the We series. shall see. I did like that episode. I think there are episodes coming up that I that really worse. hate. Okay, okay. Let's so, we'll see if I hate them as much as I... Did in the past. First impressions of Spock's brain besides what we've already said. Uh, this is the day of reckoning I've been warning <laughs> about for the first two seasons of the show. Um, One of the handful of episodes I have not seen of the series. Yeah. Um, and it was... Until now. I, I don't want to say it exceeded expectations, but it definitely met them. It, <laughs> it, it, was, it was terrible. Yeah. So... The, the, all right. I thought there were some salvageable things in it. There are. Okay. I'll say that. I don't know if we want to get into that just yet, but I can certainly see why you would consider it to be a bad episode. But it, for me, all right. Mm -hmm. I, what I will say uh -huh. is that I, I was actually, I was, I was kind of into it up until fairly late into the episode. But can, can you guess the part that is, they lost me? Where they put remote control Spock? That should have been it. Honestly, that should have been it. Oh, yes. But, oh, um, God. <laughs> but it was really the, 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 the surgery at the end. The yeah. surgery was where, really bad. Where it, was, it was terrible. <laughs> You mean talk, when Spock starts yeah, talking talk to, to Yeah, I was just, that's it. That, that was like the... Yeah. I mean, the, his, McCoy's hands weren't anywhere near the head. There was a, such a huge gap. I don't yeah. know what he was doing. It was, and part of that's that thing, and I know you guys are listening, just listened to our season two recap, 
uh, when I was talking Six about. Six weeks ago. When <laughs> I was talking about, yeah, superhero Spock. Yeah. And this mm. is one of those things like, oh, even if just half his brain's reconnected, he can instruct and in, in how to put his brain back together, even though he's not a trained surgeon. Or, you know, you shouldn't be able to feel where things are happening. Or, yes, yeah. Or be able to... Very good doctor. Uh, yeah. Well, even yeah. that, aside from that, just the idea of simplifying a brain connection to being, this is how you move the index finger. Right. This is how you move the wrist. It's well, just each, one. And this is, each yeah. individual nerve is what they were saying it was. Right. I don't agree that that made sense. Well, to be <laughs> yeah. fair, that maybe that's the way the Vulcan brain works. <laughs> yeah, a Vulcan, a Vulcan body that can stay alive for 24 hours without a brain, which... You know, even for your lungs to move and breathe in and out, and your heart to pump, don't you need the brain to control those functions? Well, I, McCoy I, says, "Well, it's this this Vulcan phys- physiology or whatever." I thought, yeah. I thought it was the, I thought he had a device hooked up that was doing that. I thought that was the no. Purpose. I he, thought that's that's that was part control. of it too. Oh, maybe that was just some remote control. Yeah, because that was just to make him move. That's. Uh, I know, I, and then somehow, so he had like mini brains within other organs, and then disembodied spot spot can talk to a communicator. It's just it's. Oh, you get the right frequency. Yes, I thought that. So made... the brain talking through the communicator was one of the least terrible things about this episode. <laughs> in my I, opinion. I, I, you know I what? Ass... I'm starting to dislike this episode more the more we talk about it. I, we'll I just I'd assumed that it was the. the Tomorrow's brain... yesterday. You're moving on up. Sorry, <laughs> Keith. <laughs> that, that, <Don't>. it was... <laughs> <laughs> that it was the remote brain that was talking to them, not the body. Not yeah, the body. it was the remote brain. Uh, uh, this episode right. lost me a little bit earlier than the surgery. Yeah, yeah. It was in the opening shots <laughs> oh, <laughs> when <laughs> Sulu uh, was clearly sitting oh, next to continuity. somebody that wasn't Chekhov, and then Chekhov was sitting next to somebody that wasn't Sulu, and then we saw them sitting next to one another, yeah. and then we saw all the extras on the bridge, and then all of a sudden there were no extras on the bridge. Well, and in one of those shots, it's definitely borrowed from an earlier season, because oh, Kirk's haircut, it's like season one almost. Well, it couldn't be. Maybe the one without Chekhov, because this... It's Kirk, like, with a season one or early season two haircut. Mm. Completely a lot shorter than what he's got. Like, I think it was parted on a different side. His hair was running. The inconsistencies in the opening shots killed this episode before it even got started. Wow. It wasn't a good start. I like the new ship, which the old ship was more of just, like, a classic rocket look. The, the alien the new, ship. The new alien ship, yeah. yes. That was an interesting That shot. was the best part of the opening. And I thought there was a really cool angled shot of the Enterprise in space at the beginning. Yes. Which I'm sure was new with the effects. Mm. But And then once the opening credits were over, some of the extras were back on the bridge. That kind of stuff, I just can't stand that. I, I noted awesome. that my wife, Marianne, would have had a field day with that sort of thing. The, the continuity errors, she loves finding those things. It was. I did catch you know, the episode where Chekhov first heats the rock, and immediately mm. they're warming their hands. Uh-huh. I thought they were acting very strangely because I was like, first of all, they're acting like they're cold at all. And all of a sudden they're like warming up. Yeah. But I noticed the particular way the one guy was moving his hands in the repetitive motion. And when they showed them later in the episode where they checked back in with Chekhov, it was the same shot, exactly. the same movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they reused that shot twice, which bothered me as well. Well, and when they beamed down, Keith and I noted that Chekhov was the only one of the five guys like, ooh, it's really cold on this glacial planet. Everyone else was like, but yeah. we're at Miami Beach. Everything's good. How yeah. many times did they say glacial? A lot. <laughs> I liked that. I don't know. I don't know why. I liked uh, and it. there was a new shot of the, an added shot of the making it appear more glacial, the planet itself. Yeah, that was cool. I uh, this was actually written originally by Gene L. Kuhn. Was it? He used the, the he had it changed to the pseudonym Lee Cronin, and oh, yeah. I see that. I there see. were like five or six other concepts he had in in it, and they were all taken out. So that's why, I'm pretty sure that's why he's like, you know what, take my name off it, just use this name, because I don't think, it, whatever his concept was for, this, this is this a bastardized version, yeah. Yeah, and he's the only writer on this thing, yeah. so it had to be Gene that wrote this episode, yeah. essentially. And no, no, Gene didn't do season three. For the third season, NBC cut their costs and then put them in a, right. a terrible time, like a Friday night time slot, which, so there were, there's some shows through history done well on Friday night, but it's usually not a... It's a death trap at that point. You're you're done. Freddy, Fredberger, Freiberger, Freiberger. Yes, Freiberger. Yeah. yeah, it had to be his fault. It had to be his writing. I don't know who else it was. Would have been. Yeah, Fred Freiberger. Fred Freiberger. Okay. Yeah, he was the producer in season three when G. Roddenberry basically said, "If you don't take us, if you make us do the Friday night time mm-hmm. slot, I'm not going to be involved." Yeah. And he thought he could bluff the studio into. Mm. Moving it out of Friday. And the studio said, that's fine. You don't have to be involved. And, I mean, his contract 
made sure he was still executive producer, but Gene stopped rewriting scripts and went hands off in season three. Mm. Gene Alcoon resigned late in season two yeah, before then. because yeah. he was so stressed out and had like he and Justin and Roddenberry all had mental breakdowns during season two because yeah. they were just so overworked trying to put out thirty episodes yeah. of this a year. Yeah. So Friedberger just I would not want to blame. All of season three on Freiburger. Right. I feel like there are a lot of issues. Like the cut costs, they were still on that grinding it out schedule. Right. Roddenberry's not around. You know, Coon's not around. Just for the contrast, the season two season premiere, especially in a time when season premieres were a big deal, mm-hmm. was a muck time, which is great. Great episode. This Let's is your do season another three. Spock season premiere. Yeah. That's exactly. what it felt like. Yeah. And it's awful. It's also the first time that a, a character's name is used in the title. <laughs> is it? Yeah. That's true. They yeah. usually have really weird titles. Mm. More happen later, but yeah. Um, of course, Star Trek 3 Search for Spock. Uh, yeah. Coming up. So it almost barely really counts so. that they had uh, the titular line said <laughs> once by each of the three yes. people that are down there. So you had uh, Kirk and uh, Scotty yeah. and McCoy each say it yeah. at one point. <laughs> I, one of the things I did like about this episode is that conversation where Chekhov's going through the M classes. And they're talking about the different yeah, years different year and development. Yeah, I thought that was interesting and having him go through it. But then that. Kirk makes this jump to a conclusion where he's like, he says, well, she could breathe our air, so she has to be from one of the implants. It's like, that rules out that she could breathe our air and other people's air. So that's a very false, without, apparently without Spock's brain, Kirk is helpless and can't yeah. think rationally. Yeah, I, what bothered me is they're like, it's that system right there. And this, the starscape they're showing, mm-hmm. all the stars are the same size, almost all the same brightness. Yeah. They weren't near a star. Right. I don't know how you say, you're pointing system like it's a state you right. go to or a city. Right. But that's not what was represented. Yeah. Even with the updated special effects. Yeah. I believe the, uh, the, uh, the fallacy is, um, what is it, affirming the consequent? Oh, if, uh, if A, then B, B, yeah, therefore Yeah, exactly. A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, the biggest problem I had with that along those lines was when Kirk's like, well, if somebody took out the brain, they could obviously put it back, back in. Right. Because I'm yeah. like, really? Because Hannibal Lecter like, took out a brain too and ate it. And I don't think he had the knowledge to put it back. <laughs> Just saying, you can cut things out. Yeah. I can cut your head off. I can't reattach. Now, the fact that they attached Spock's brain to a whole operating system and made it work, then you might assume that they have the knowledge to put it back in. But they didn't know that when he first said that. And that, to me, I was like, that is not logically accurate. There are a lot of he fallacies. He needs Spock to yeah, give his logic. Clearly. Clearly. Uh, this is the only episode where Sulu gets to do a captain's log. Yeah. He had so little to do in this episode. Yeah. I thought he had the least of yeah. anybody. Yep. Scotty, on the other hand, front and center, yep. follows Kirk off the bridge to sick bay. Don't know why, because it's not like he's needed. He's, he's not asked for Yeah, it. he's filling in for Spock this episode in a way. I mean, literally, because Kirk calls I mean, him Spock on the planet. He is third in command. Right. Mm. So he would take over Spock's role, but it feels like he takes it over before he knows he needs to take it yes. over. Yes, yeah. And then even when he does it, like, it's just weird. And Scotty has weird new hair. This, this, his hairstyle. Forehead. I don't like Very it. exposed. Yeah. He looks old. He does, yeah. Older. Yeah. I mean, not nearly what he looks like in the movies. <laughs> Yeah. Um, where he's completely unrecognizable from the series. Yes. But Even that's the same yeah, actor. It's weird. But yeah, it's it was weird. Obviously, I know what Scotty in the series looks like and Scotty in the movies look like. Uh-huh. I'd love to see a year by year comparison <laughs> of him like 1970, 1971. Because between 1969 and 1979, he goes a complete dramatic change in appearance. I know there are some 70s photos from conventions where he's got the. He looks like a hipster. I'm from the looking 70s. at some 70s yeah. photos. Yeah. Uh, which are kind of in between. Uh-huh. But I, I really wish there was like a year by year James Doohan page. If anyone knows the one out there, email <laughs> tracked at IBDpresents.com. There you go. But yeah, I think he looks noticeably older in season three. Yeah. I don't know why that goes with the hair. And then I think the haircut's a large part. Everybody of else is just growing it out differently. Yeah. McCoy's hair is different. Spock's is the same. Even after he has brain surgery, his hair is exactly the same. With, no, yeah, you don't have to shave it or anything. No, Scar, mm. they just laser it and it looks like it never happened. Yeah. Uh, sorry, they try laser it. I, I think the other thing that made Scotty look old, and maybe this is the right time to go to fashion, because this is fashion related. Fashion. He was wearing high-waisted pants, yes. and everybody else was wearing yes. untucked, low-waisted yeah. pants. <laughs> to that I say no to the fashion of the, the eye morgues, the ladies. 
I don't remember. I think so. I think the morgues were the men. Yeah. They kept saying morgues. Yeah. The, their fashion was spot on. I, I thought their fashion was great. I thought they looked great. The Which color did you prefer? Well, they were all pretty much the same outfit, just different colors. Yeah, there was a slight variation, but I liked that the, the back was... It was like a wide... The, the straps for their outfit were wide on the shoulders, so it gave the, the strapless appeal, even though the, what they, they were... They weren't strapped. They weren't as skimpy as some of the other outfits. No, although but when they, they were still good looking. When they stunned the one eye morgue, it's literally an upskirt shot. She I wrote that down too. Like, Luma. W- yeah. What is going on? <laughs> like the the yellow sh- outfit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. They chose purple to be the primary, but I guess that's because it was one of the next gen or the uniform colors. Well, it's what the uh, could be different. <laughs> it's what the uh, the the brand. What what they call the brain? The controller. The controller. controller. Yeah, it's like okay, purple's that's a best. Whole other thing. <laughs> While we're still on fashion, did you notice the uh, Delta emblems are now larger and outlined in thick black yeah. this season mm-hmm. in a way they had not been before? I like that look of the yeah. those. It makes them stand out more. Do we like Spock's hat, the remote control Spock? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, no aspect of that story is any good. No. And I think the jumpsuit he's wearing is... Um... Awful. Yeah, but it's from another episode. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know that he wore it, but somebody else wore it in another episode. Also, as you mentioned, when they beam down, supposedly they're on a really cool glacial planet. Yeah. They're not wearing coats. Take a coat. I mean, no just... no budget, but it still felt... You know what? Just and have instead, to wear... they just said, Kirk's just like, oh, Chekhov. You have... Chekhov's like, oh, this isn't too bad, which totally missed the opportunity to make a Russia joke there yep. about how cool yep. Russia is. But this then just Kirk's shows like... how lazy they are at this point. Then Kirk's like, well, you have thick skin. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make I any don't, sense. Because none of, you're not acting cold. Mm-mm. I mean, clearly the soundstage wasn't cold. No. There's a lot fewer planets this season, a lot more ship episodes for budget. Yeah. But yeah. that's all the fashion I had. I don't know if you had any other. I think that was it. I just like the I like the I morgues. Outfits were eye-catching. Cool. Bill Thies has still got it. The morgues there. were just looked like they were borrowed from other, a lot of the other episodes with primitive people. But. Yeah, the fur on the the fur sleeves yeah. matching the two neat leather yeah. jackets that weren't dirty at all. Speaking of why we're on Morgai Morg, I have a couple of Morgai Morg notes. Mm-hmm. Why did the morgues that were the security morgues not have the wrist thing that they can control those guys? Mm. So they could just push a button and control them. Didn't understand that. Seems like an issue. And I did like whenever they said, "Not I Morg, not Morg." I, I just want to say not our morgue, not more cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. Because <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like they were singing Eye on the Walrus. Well, I think if the eye morgues had the gauntlets, they could free themselves then. I guess that, the, yeah. I guess that's true. But the, uh, to be clear, eye morgue is spelled E-Y-M-O-R-G. Yes. Yes. Oh. morgue is M-O-R-G. Yeah. Hmm. It's not an Apple product. <laughs> 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 not yet. Not yet. Maybe so. But so early in the episode when it was just men and they had no concept of female, I was like, oh, they're going to differ from the they binary right. genders. Yeah. And no, no. no. Kirk's like, so, mates, you know, a woman. It's like, universal hey, buster. So a, a couple of things that raised this. First of all, I, wanted, I noted that the, this is another example of them having those mysterious devices, like the gauntlets mm-hmm. that shouldn't do what they mm-hmm. seem to be doing because yeah. how do you control, like, just, yeah. oh, I just think something and. Yeah. yeah, press the yeah. button. Everybody Even though were... their brains are like a child. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, the drag worker just tell that their brains are like a child? That was another thing I noted yeah. later on there. It's very sophisticated drag worker. Oh, card. very. Also a lie detector in this episode. Yes. Which yep. I think we've seen before, but not often. Yeah. Yep. They should use that more often. Yeah, in the court martial, they could have taken care of everything. All those episodes. <laughs> All those courtroom episodes. Without the beeping. Yeah. They would have had to even uh, take away somebody's heartbeat. <laughs> What else was While we're talking about the tricorders, the phasers also operated differently this time. We had the big, the whole screen went green. There was that, yeah. But it was still focused on one, one individual. Person. That didn't make any sense. And then when it went wide and focused on the group, when Kirk and all of mm-hmm. them were stunned, Spock's body isn't stunned and fall down. Right, because if you don't have a brain, you can't get Yeah, stunned. but you still have your nervous system functioning. I know you would think that, but no. If the brain's gone, you, you don't react. But then they, no without understanding the remote or anything that's going on, they still had him sit. Somehow they moved him and had him sit. Like, I'd buy it if they, like, picked him up and he was laying on the floor. But he was sitting in a chair as if the remote had been used. No, that made any sense. Especially, as we said, the Kirk, whoever gets to the remote to control Spock, to mm. get to make a right turn and then reach out to the woman. And, yeah. 
To Keep in mind, also, this episode, they've all been up for quite a few hours. This is like an episode 24. You're right. That's right. Because they only have 24 but they don't hours. Look ti- nobody looks tired. Even though the episode, didn't, like, after the beginning, it's 16 hours later. Yeah. Like, they maybe it happened first us. thing in the morning. And then that's, they're just a little sleepy. That's true. I thought a weird thing was when McCoy's talking about putting on the, uh, the, the, the helmet. Teacher. The teacher. The teacher, yeah. Which, I actually like that. Yeah. I like that concept. I like yeah. the way it looks. But he's like, well... And Kirk's like, well, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know, what if I could bring this technique to the world? And I'm like, what, what, wait a minute, what world? Why are you saying bring this I technique wrote that to the world? What are you talking about? <laughs> world? How does, the, and how does nobody catch that? No, I wrote that. That's just like galaxy, universe. He's only going to hold it for three hours. He can't even finish the surgery in three hours. <laughs> right. And how is that useful? Do people's brains often get stolen and they just haven't had the knowledge to put them back? I don't under, yeah, I don't, the, a tricky concept. I, I feel like being able to do, perform that level of brain surgery would be useful for other applications than yeah. that. But, <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't understand. And again, this I and I guess they don't they don't really resolve it at the end. But I feel like they do what they've done in other episodes, which is you have a kind of a primitive society with a computer or a, or a smarter entity running it, and their solution is well, we're going to disconnect this smart thing that's been controlling and helping you, and good luck with you can start primitive. So. Good luck with Jesus. that. That's Being right. primitive, go up top and mate with those guys, and you guys can develop like everyone else. It's like, yeah, you can wait build, a minute, you can build houses before you freeze to death. Just go up there and do it. Yeah, right. Why wouldn't you? Why not leave them with what they have? I mean, I wrote Prime Directive Dick because I just think it's just yeah. a well, cause sick so, move. No, I don't think the Prime Directive applies because obviously well, they're in an advanced society. You're right, and they can travel right. in space. I was wondering but, about but that. But Kirk too, is first. setting them back to right, and so he's, here's the thing: he, can't you just put a little portable computer where Spock's brain was? Right. To run something. Right. I mean, yeah, the whole, I agree, the natural development, this was their right. natural development. <laughs> if they had said an alien came in and built this underground layer and separated the genders, that's interference. Right. This was their natural development. Right, right. And, and, and you know, in the 60s, they used to say we're going to bomb them back to the Stone Age. Kirk was just like, I'm going to bomb you back to the Stone Age, but I'm going to send you back to the Stone Age. You have to move to the surface. That's Terrible. just the one it is. The whole idea is men and women need to be together. I mean, he, he, he's literally saying men and women need to be together. And okay, but there are other to ways to do it than just yeah, exactly. women go up there and right. deal with the primitive men. Yeah. Why not keep the, the, the learning device? And, and <laughs> I don't know why I keep forgetting the name of it. What teacher. Is it? The teacher. The teacher. Hmm. I'm not sure what it'll do to you. Well, whatever. If it gives them enough to take these quantum leaps... Well, and Spock even says sense. at the end when he's doing his whole little monologue yeah. and yeah. laughing at, yeah. a retrograde civilization like talks about yeah. how they've and, retreated. And this is one of those early shut up, we don't like smart people things where Spock's going off about yeah. it and they're like, oh God, well, I don't know why I reattached. He's like, McCoy, shut up and listen to what he's saying. This should be amazing to you. <laughs> he's telling you what actually happened here. And Yeah. 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 And then they, they, fade, they laugh it off and fade out. Yeah, like, they, they, <laughs> I, I was like, this is like the most interesting thing of the episode. Exactly. Will you just shut up? Let, yeah. Let's hear it. Well, and then Spock starts to say, well, this kind of happened on Earth back in Roman times. Right. And I was like, wait, what? Right. <laughs> I, I don't think that. anything like this happened in Earth history. What are you talking about? Well, not catch I that. want you to further explain. We don't know that now, but in the future, they will discover that that, no, that did it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Until what... you come and explain to me what you mean, I don't get what he said. Well, since McCoy cut him off, we'll never know. Yeah. And that was... And why does the teacher knowledge only last three hours? Ah, that's a good what question. What sense does that make? Uh, make and then the sense. woman, uh, the main woman, her name was Kara. Why does Kara have no memory of the Enterprise or anything? Mm. Right. It, it, well, and why wouldn't... if, if the, What the teacher should do is teach them how to make it so it lasts more longer than three hours. Well, teach them how to, yeah. to make that happen. Yeah, the teacher was kind of a jerk. Yeah. Smarmy. And so their spaceship, she was she put on the teacher helmet. She got the knowledge to take out the brain and what they needed. They found the spaceship, got there, traveled back, right. put the brain in the thing, and that all happened within three hours. It took the Enterprise 16 hours to fly there right. alone. Mm-hmm. Right. So their space travel was so much more advanced. They took the they she actually she took she took the portable thinker charger uh-huh. on the on the the ship, so she just kept recharging her brain every two and a half hours. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like the remote control Spock version <laughs> yes. of the teacher stuff. And she had to pay extra for that because it didn't come with the it didn't come with the phone with the ship. And so these women that are supposedly really stupid, mm-hmm. they said they're childlike. Yeah, childlike. Yeah, the eye work. Right. Yeah. They somehow 
know to bring the men down and trap them so they can give them pleasure and pain right. and then release them. Right. Which I'm assuming is sex. And if they don't... Probably. I, for yeah. for yeah. procreation, even though there were no children. And they well, the men were yeah. the same age. Yeah. Yeah. But then they kept some of them as, like, pain slaves. Yeah. And then... Pain slaves. <laughs> and then... So they have this trap that they're clearly using regularly... And right. apparently they have this knowledge that they don't seem to have about how to trap these men. But then nobody's waiting for the elevator to come down. Like, right. And them come down. Right. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't make Because, like, Luma is all like, oh, my God, why are you here? Before she get the upskirt shot. Yeah. It just, none of it made sense. No. So there are a couple of good things, I will say. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to hear these. So I don't have any good things. For the fir- I've for gone the, through mine. For the first bit, this is the first, this is like a return to actually using the crew for something on the yes. bridge. Uh, I, I was actually enjoying the, the discussion they were having. Mm-hmm. They, they seemed to be actually using the actors in a good way. And, and, you know, yeah, that part ad, I really ad, liked a lot. Advising Kurt. Yeah. yeah, I like that part. Um, what else was there? The, the, the bit about, what woman, what are you talking about? You know, when, uh, talking to the morgues. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of there actually being a language barrier of some sort, despite whatever magical translator they have. Right. Because uh, that, should, that should happen a lot more often Because I thought about that, too. I was sci-fi. like, well, how come this guy's yeah. speaking English? Yeah, they're both speaking English. Yeah. Well, they were using the tricorder to translate. Oh, well, <laughs> but no, it seemed like they were. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree with Keith that certain concepts should translate. Yeah. Yeah, they had to reproduce in some way, right? Yeah. Except there were no kids, and they were all the same age. Yeah. Well, although, I guess <laughs> I'm falling into my own binary construct trap of every... Race in the universe has to. That's the only way they can possibly reproduce. So. Yeah, maybe these guys live for yeah. hundreds of years. Maybe they're, they're they're just like just uh, those sea creatures that that reproduce by themselves. And so the, the the overall concept of what was happening on that planet, it seemed like it might have like at first seemed like it was an idiocracy concept, which I thought was very mm-hmm. interesting. Oh, mm-hmm. just yeah. idiocracy the, the, ripped off Star Trek. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yep. all the smart people dying off. <clears throat> there was a there was a very strong argument that this was this. This episode was the precursor to all the Star Trek movies. This is where they drew it from. See, because they actually said something very similar to the, the title. So I have like Star, Star Trek oh. 3, The Search for Spock's mm-hmm. Brain. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I like uh, how in the first movie, Kirk said, This is Star Trek, the motion picture. Right on the <laughs> <laughs> Not really. And also, one, one of the iMorgs actually started to use the line or something like a, a paraphrasing. The needs of the many outweighing the needs of the Oh, yes. The yes. 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 Yep. I got that as well. Mm-hmm. So they, they were building the, the uh, movies just, just to make an elaborate callback to this episode. <laughs> 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 they just like, built right up to it. And... No. Because <laughs> <laughs> then Kirk, or then Spock should have said, you can't disconnect my brain. The needs of the many outweigh <laughs> Well, yeah, they went across the galaxy for one guy's brain. Come on, that's yeah. Yeah. you need to leave me alone so I can help the civilization. That's what <laughs> yeah. you just said. Yes, that's the only logical. You said, you know, yeah. Captain, remember that? Remember that episode when you chased me down to you know chase uh, uh, my brain down? Yeah. This is just like that. You shouldn't. What about Scotty's fate when they were trying to trick Kara and he just like, oh, and then oh yeah, the oh what? That yeah. was so that random. Was terrible. Yeah. I also liked when the women, the Iborgs, were doing charades. So they have to pay the actresses to speak lines? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they can still be yeah. counted as extras? Yes. When Spock's brain was talking to them. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was actually... a surpri- It seemed to uh, better establish his character in the sense of uh, the idea of very uh, very logically saying... Uh, Here's the... the yeah, Here's yeah the just leave me. Out. Yeah, uh, let me go. This is fine. Yeah. Or uh, the, the, um, you're not going to be able to, to fix this. So right. why waste the time? How much yeah. time you've already wasted doing yeah. this? Mm. Um, you kind of answered this question already. This, this the thing about the, the prime directive because uh-huh. they just beamed right down there mm-hmm. with uniforms and equipment out, just not even attempting to disguise anything. You mentioned before they never tried to put on costumes or. Yeah, I mean, they definitely should have been following Prime Directive here because they didn't know for sure. Although they were on a time crunch and they suspected. So the the Prime Directive, as they later make canon, is the, the dividing line is if the society has achieved warp travel. Which clearly this ship, to have yeah, got with the Enterprise took 16 hours right. to follow yeah. up, right. was warp capable. So the Prime Directive should not apply to the situation. However, since they thought the planet was primitive... Yeah. Kind of should apply. Yeah. This might have been belonged in the fashion section, but I noticed that the caveman's hair was curiously lustrous and untangled. Uh, in many, <laughs> many yeah. shots. Yeah. They the, didn't look very authentic caveman. They look like the people <laughs> who had just been put into a costume. Uh, speaking of fashion, my alternate episode was called Chapel Skirt. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chapel had a brief cameo. It, in their yeah, lines. and that her skirt was it was pretty high. I, I I noted it, and I so that episode would be where an alien race comes and gets her skirt, so they can start reproducing on their planet because that way they can attract the uh, the morgues, if you will, of that planet to be attracted the eye morgues of that planet. <laughs> Because as you know, gender is a binary. It's a sure. you know, binary construct. Is of the My alternate episode was when the ship was attacked. There was a patient that McCoy and Chapel were working with, and they just took their rent. and they were like, "Hey, Spock, we gotta deal with him now because he's suddenly here. You need to go away." But my throat's really sore. <laughs> like this is a, no Spock's more important. You need to go away, right? And they turned that patient away without offering them care. So, they, so they had their communicators. Yes. Could they have been... Which did not look all the same when they were lined up on the yeah, table. Yeah, that was weird. Hmm. Yeah. When, when they had their belts on, could they have been beamed back up to the ship to have the belts removed or beamed up without the belts and then beamed back down? That's good or... Possibly. Real yeah, the range on those wrist things that the eye marks had couldn't be that... I was thinking that because they're underground, maybe there's interference with sure. the communicators, but they didn't seem to be. Yeah, if the communicators work, the yeah. transporters. Should... And, uh, and, and so you're purposely going into the trap. So... I'm going to take my engineer. I'm going to take my doctor. I'm going to take this robot version of my first <laughs> Not only officer. your engineer, your backup but, science officer. At but where you're at Chekhov and the security guards, we don't need you. Yeah. We don't need any security protection <laughs> well, to go into this trap. And why not just send those guys back up to the ship? <laughs> that, all they're doing is hanging well, out. Well, I mean, they should have gone with them. But yeah. yeah, all they're doing and is... As soon as they left them on the surface, I'm like, okay, so nobody's dying underground. Right, right. <laughs> it, it kind of removed well, the danger. Well, something right. I read today made the note of, you know, the red, no red shirts die in this episode. But the other guys get tortured down below the ground. Well, that's the alternate episode. Like, they're still waiting on the surface. Yeah. And the two red shirts freeze to death. And Chekhov's, like, doing the Sulu thing with the, the, ta- the oh, blanket. Yeah. But, we're, we're waiting for the captain. We're not coming up. You could tell they weren't that cold because they weren't constantly updating what the temperature was, as, as ah! Sulu did. In the no, it was event. just one shot they played a couple of times. Yeah. I think, overall, this episode was just way, way, way overly dramatic. And that was my yeah. biggest problem with it. Was uh, they, I mean, I know the brain was stolen, whatever, mm-hmm. but just so many things they were saying, and Kirk's reactions, and then oh. McCoy going, a child could do it. And then when yeah. he's doing the surgery, all the flashes of the faces over uh-huh. the surgery, yeah. it just all felt ridiculous. DeForest Kelly could not make his eyes bug out more than he could <laughs> than he did here. I also like the random cuts to Spock. Without his brain, yeah. In like the scenes where there was action going on or some kind of dramatic thing, they would just cut a shot of him not reacting at all, as if they had to have that shot. It's like I don't understand why it was a Neway's contract. That's maybe that. So the fight scene where Kirk McCoy and Scotty are fighting uh-huh. the two morgues, morgues yeah. which first of all don't know why there's any problem because two against one gang up, right? Whatever. Right. So Kirk gets to knock the one out mm-hmm. while McCoy and Scotty are fighting the other one. It's tight shot. Kirk kicks him, mm. falls down. Kirk wins. He comes over. Scotty and McCoy are on the ground, and he has to help them up. Yeah. But the other one's down, too. So who knocked them onto the ground after they knocked out the other guy that Kirk was the only hero <laughs> allowed to be up? That doesn't make any sense. And Kirk, also, another hero thing, he just figured things out way too easily uh-huh. with the controller and everything. Uh-huh. It just... Uh... And considering how he didn't really figure out, well, she breathed our air, so she must be one of these fans. Blah, blah, blah. All those fallacies. Yeah. I think you did the same groan you did when you made that note. Uh-huh. About Kirk figuring out the... The belt? Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, I did write down several lines of dialogue. We've covered a few. But life form readings Mr. Spock to Scotty like mm-hmm. he forgot. Yeah. Um, call Chekhov and tell him to send my stomach down. Oh, God, it's terrible. That was just... I laughed at that one. Um, Hers is the mind of a child. Yeah, we talked about that. There's the sexism coming in Mm. and everything. I certainly... But a girl, too. Oh, and then Kirk, the sexual innuendo, and Kirk's like, I certainly noticed the delightful aspects. Yes. I mean, all he could be talking about were their outfits. That's the only thing he could be... And it was the weird thing of like, oh, we gotta save Spock's brain. But I just want to know, did you guys check out these ladies? Right. All right, now let's get Spock's brain. But just in case you thought I missed it, there are some hot chicks down here. The My next... favorite part of remote control Spock was when he was walking into the trap and he brushes against the branches. And it's just very like weird and 
What I, like I'm gonna make sure he runs into the branches so uh, he can show how mindless he is. Yes. My least favorite part was somehow with the remote control while writhing in agony, Kirk gets him to walk over, grab an arm, and hit the right button to yep. release the belt. Yep. <laughs> that, that's, no sense. That's I quite the controller. That. That's that's no sense. Speaking of the controller, that is it for my entire page of notes. <laughs> I just want to read some of the reception for this episode. Sure, <laughs> please. Uh, this the episode. It actually has a ninety percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Fresh ninety percent. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> you got me. Uh, the episode is generally regarded by most fans and those who took part in the production as the worst episode of the series. William Shatner called this one of the series' worst episodes, calling the episode's plot a tribute to NBC executives who slashed the show's budget and placed it in a bad time slot. Leonard Nimoy wrote, "Frankly, during the entire shooting of that episode, I was embarrassed." A feeling that overcame me many times during the final season of Star Trek. <laughs> wow. I would that, sounds like argue, a, that sounds like a Spock line almost. It it's does. I would still argue that this was not the worst episode of the series so far, let alone ever, uh, totally. I would agree. I, I, I think well, Return I, to they, Tomorrow beats it. And there's going to be much worse. I mean, there's going to be much worse, yeah, I think. I feel true. coming up. Um, I think from just being able to compartmentalize some of the better parts of it, mm-hmm. the surgery could have been enough to kill the entire episode. Right. Oh, this is the other thing I saw. There was a staged production of the episode produced for a limited run at the Irvine Improv in 2004 in Irvine, California. So if you're looking to do something in the Mad Lab late night slot, if you want to produce Spock's Way... I totally want to now. <laughs> I do. I, I want to fix it. I think it would be great. Think, I want to do a good version of Spock's brain. I think that would be awesome. Uh, somehow on IMDb, on a scale of 1 to 10, this has an average 5.6 rating. I feel like that's too high. That's remarkably high. Out of over 1,500 reviews. Wow. So, yeah, that's all I have. Keith, what other notes do you got? Um, we didn't talk about the guest stars. This one had a, a couple of couple. guest stars. The only one, the, and according to IMDb, there's Kara, Luma, and Creature. Creature's the guy, the more. Oh, okay. I don't know why he was credited as Creature, James Darris. I assume that's the one that they actually questioned. Cause he had I lines. think so, yeah. He, James Darris, he was best known for this episode. Definitely not an actor that ended up getting a lot of no. work. Kara was played by Marge Doucet. Yeah. She ended up being on Guiding Light for a long time. I, I, I saw. She's best known for All My Children. Oh, okay. Uh, 1998 to 2002, but she also did a run from 2003 to 2009 on Guiding Light. That's what I, yeah. Uh, she did more episodes of Guiding Light, but according to IMDb, she's better known for All My Children. The 121 Guiding Lights, 49 All My Children's. And then she's third best known for this episode of Star Trek. She has a lot of credits. Okay. I guess she's just not, none of them were notable. Okay. Until she did soap operas. And then Luma was played by Sheila Layton. Yeah. I don't think she has many credits. Uh, She's best best known for this episode. There you go. (laughs) So, yeah, not high on the guest star train. She had just a. recently before this done an episode of get smart oh well yeah but yeah we already ranked the episode yep uh we have not picked men women steven who's your woman uh one of the it's, it's uh there was the blue green one and then there was the one who was i don't remember what color but there it's was the, the blue green one the guys uh no no you're right it was the girl feeding the guys that's my what, girl. i don't remember what color she was uh I'll just put morgue feeding the men. Yeah. Why Why do you choose the morgue feeding the men? She was doing a nice thing. And <laughs> <laughs> in my mind coming into this episode, I thought Marge you say I was really going to be gaga over her, but I wasn't. For Kara, the main. Yeah, the main yeah. Well, you can't do head for it anymore. It's a new season. I know. I'm, I'm abstaining, though, because I'm in a respectful period of morning. <laughs> Get a stain. You're, you're breaking the rules. This is a reset. This is new. This is your chance for a good life. You have four morgue options, and then there was the female patient in sick bay. Or you could choose a man. Well, there was also the, the crew woman who was walking past the screen at the beginning. That's true. There, yeah. Yes. Is that who you want? The yes. crew, the crew woman walking past the screen. <laughs> I am going to choose the morgue in the blue green. Because I liked that she wasn't feeding the men, that she was just like, you guys, that's uh, whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here, keep my mouth shut, see what's happening. I'm not going to be like Luma running down the hallways and getting into trouble. And I'm not going to be like the other girl feeding them. I'm just going to sit back and uh, play it cool. Yeah. 
Sorry, Keith. <laughs> I, I call bull on your trying to abstain. <laughs> this merch headford has gone on too long. We've ended it. So next week on It's All Been Trek Before, we are going further into season three. Mm. This will be the second episode. I'm pretty sure it's not as bad as Spock's brain. It's called The Enterprise Incident. Yes. And it says, in apparently insane Captain Kirk has the Enterprise deliberately enter the Romulan neutral zone where the ship is immediately captured by the enemy. And we get the Joanne Linville as the Romulan Roman commander, captain, which yeah. is a... Uh, they have a female captain, yeah, yeah. the Romulan commander. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is like, an iconic character in the original series, even yeah. though she has no name. I think she's That's probably really the most weird. iconic character without With a that name. name. Yeah, I I remember Joanne Linville though. Oh, everybody I really like, like that's a very iconic. I'm excited about role. this episode. Yeah. I think I think I'm more feeding men. It's probably going to be dethroned by Joanne Linville. I'm going to predict. And I, yeah, I think so too. I think I think uh, Joanne Linville is going to sweep yeah. sweep uh, yeah. all of us. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> interestingly, looking at IMDb, Scotty, you heard us, Sulu, Chekhov, Chapel are all credited in it, just okay. like they all were in this one. All right. So we're starting season three with our full complement yeah. of supporting players. We're going up next week, but it's going to be a bumpy road. Yeah. Enterprise Incident. Come along with us. I forgot it was season yeah. three. I, I, did I thought too. it was pretty decent. Like that, and in Truth, There's No Beauty. And, I, lo- uh, I knew that was season three, but I liked yeah. that one. And there, there's a couple. For the World is Hollow, and I have touched yep, the sky. That's, that was the next one I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. That was uh, one of the very first episodes I saw. That's another one that I think is an interesting episode. Pretty good episode. episode yeah. yeah. So we're going to have some, some good moments. The, yeah. Join us next week. We promise season three is a total trash. No. There's... Stick with it. And we'll, we'll uh, talk you through yeah, we'll, we'll get, we'll get you the bad stuff. We will. Celebrate the good stuff. Yeah, and you know, good stuff's coming up. Have a great week. Continue to live long and prosper despite the lack of a brain. Who's got the time?